So the fourth and final video in this series is getting the call bridge in CMS registered to call manager. So remember, the call manager is going to be using the API access because it generates for a conference call between three devices over here and a conference call using the call bridge, CMS call bridge as the bridge. Well, call manager needs to create a temporary space to house that conference call and it's using the API we have to supply the FQDN because that's one of the SANs in the certificate and also we're going to have to use the credential of the API user that has the role of API inside CMS. So we're going to be adding the CMS as a conference bridge. You have to remember then that uh, the CMS, because this API uses HTTPS, a certificate is going to be presented, the, the uh, CMS.CER is going to be sent to the core manager and the core manager needs to be able to trust that and by the way inside there the, the in the sans remember we had the xmpp domain the fqdn of the server and the join refer to uh, video one in this cms series for information on how we created that certificate but the point i'm making right now is the core manager needs to be able to trust that certificate you can't trust self-signed certificates so we have to install, well, we created this certificate on the internal DNS. So we created this root certificate, root.cer. We need to put that in the core manager. That's just the arrow was there in the wrong place. We have to put that in to the core manager trust store. So we can then trust the certificate CMS is presenting back to the core manager. So this is all required. Core manager is using the API to create this space. This is all required when we come to register the conference bridge as well. So without further ado, let's get on with this. And we're going to go to um, media resources. In fact, before we do anything then, let's install the root certificate. And I've already got it in my downloads folder on this machine. And I only have to do this to the publisher, UCM, and that will be propagated to all the subscriber nodes. So you don't have to upload it to the subscriber as well as the publisher. Okay, so we're gonna to go to certificate management, upload, call manager trust, in the downloads folder, we've got that root certificate which we required when we generated the the web admin certs in CMS. It will tell me to restart TFTP as well as core manager. It's unnecessary, just restarting the core manager services is going to be sufficient. And we have to restart both core manager services. So let's go down to unified serviceability. And we want to I'd say restart the subscriber first. So then we then we restart the pub. When we restart the pub, it will fail over back to the sub. So we want to see it registered to the subscriber when we're all when we're done. Uh, you'll see what I mean by all this in a, in a few moments. Okay. So go to the subscriber first because we'll then reset the pub last. which means that we go back to the primary, which is the sub. Okay, there's a subscriber. Let's just wait a few minutes for that to happen, and then we're gonna to go to the publisher. Then we'll add the conference bridge and the admin GUI on core manager. Okay, then that's, we're on the publisher here. So let's go in and find the core manager again. Restart that. Okay, now we've got the root certificate of the entity that signed that web admin certificate in CMS, which is being presented back to the core manager. Core manager can now trust that. Then we can have that successful TLS connection to the CMS when we come to register the conference bridge. So let's go to conference bridge, add new, and then let's go and put in meeting server. Now the name here, 
we call it CFB CMS, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to match exactly what you used inside the CMS. If I go over here on the CMS, whoops, I forgot my syslog follow there. See what a pain it is. So XMPP call bridge list, not call bride, call bridge, call bride something else. Okay, so it doesn't have to match this, but there's no reason why you would change the name. So let's go and put the same name in there. And the SIP trunk, we're using the SIP trunk destination here. And remember, I specified in the previous video, we must use the FQDN here in the SIP trunk because that name is in the SAN of the certificate that's being presented back to core manager. If we use IP address, then that would fail, that TLS connection would fail. So we could, by the way, have put the IP address in the SIP trunk and overridden that and put the FQDN here as well. So don't, strictly speaking, have to put the IP address in the CMS SIP trunk, but you, do, you would then have to override the SIP trunk destination right here. So as it happens, the SIP trunk destination in the uh, CMS trunk is the FQDN, which is also in the SAN, so it should be good. This is the API access, API, API, API. And remember the port number for the web admin was 8443. Let's just go over here, web admin. It's this port number right there, not the web bridge. Okay, let's put this syslog follow on as well. So let's just change that port number there. So we, the core manager is using the API, which is using the web admin, which is port 8443. Now, when we reset it, we should see it register because we have installed the root certificate. You can probably see in the syslog follow as well if it registers successfully. Currently says unregistered, but I'm sure it will come in. It'll take 30 seconds or so. Also, you could reset the SIP trunk as well if there's a problem with the SIP trunk. So this is what the core manager is doing. It's doing a, a get here when it comes to register system status. It's, it's doing a API call. And then it looks like maybe it came in there. Okay. And it's registered. Now, I... If I re if I restarted the publisher last, it should register to the subscriber core manager, but that's not a big big problem. If I just restart the so the pub UCM service, it will then register to the subscriber. Okay, that's that's uh, that's something I'll do. I'm just going to do that behind the scenes here. I'm going to go to serviceability. I'm not sure why it's registered to the subscriber. The publish the uh, the is the subscriber is the the first choice. Let's just initiate that failover manually. I'm going to just behind the scenes, I'm going to pause the video, I'm just going to restart the pub UCM service. So I did that in the background and you can see now it has registered to the subscriber, the primary core processing agent. Okay, so we've got this conference bridge registered and now we should be able to make a conference call. So let me get my, um, let me, what am I going to do here? I'm going to be getting a call to my Jabber client. and we'll bring in one of the WebRTC users as well. Okay, this guy's coming up slowly but surely. Just waiting for it to go to this software mode, checking here on the bottom left-hand side. And let's call this guy over here which is my 8845. And right now, then I'm gonna be able to call the user inside. Now, which, which user signed in? Let's just take a look again. 3HQ, so I'm gonna call in 3HQ. So HQ3 at cci. .com collabcert.com so let's press the conference button over here press send 
answer that guy and then press the comms button again I think you you should be convinced that we have a conference call hosted on the CMS itself in a space. Let's access the GUI of the CMS. And if I go to uh, spaces, we can see there's this temporary space that's been added by call manager, which is why we needed that API access, the credential and the right port number and the FQDN, which uh, which matches what uh, one of the sounds in the certificate. So this space has been automatically generated. We can go down here and look at the calls. We will see a third three party conference. So let's just disconnect all. That's a convenient way rather than doing that on the devices themselves. Okay, disconnect all active calls. And then that space that we saw earlier will now have been deleted by call manager. One other thing as a good practice, we do have these built-in conference bridges inside the call manager. It's, I don't think it, as a video call, it, it will necessarily pick those. But it's a good idea just to hide them. We never want to be using those when we're doing a conference call. So let's. So the, the, there were two conference bridges there. Let's go to Media Resource Group. Add new, and then at the moment we're leaving everything. Everything that's not applied to a, a UCM, sorry, a Media Resource Group, is open to everybody. It's a free for all. But the moment I put something in the Media Resource Group, then I have to explicitly allow or assign that to a list and assign the list to the device or the trunk or device pool. So right now, these two conference bridges, one on the sub, one on the pub, are in a media resource group, and that's not assigned to anybody. Therefore, nobody, never can these conference bridges be used. All the other media resources, the CMS conference bridge, the enunciator, the IVR, built-in core manager, Music and Hall, MTP, they're not assigned to any media resource group, therefore anybody can use those. And that's the recommendation for the lab. Just leave your video conference bridge on CMS in an unused group. It's a bit like the non partition. And that means anybody, the two phones, any trunks, anything inside Core Manager is able to use that conference bridge. But at the moment, no one will be able to use the two built in conference bridges, which are audio only. There's no low bit rate codex. They're very limited. You generally don't want to be using these inside Core Manager. So we've hidden them by putting them in an unused media resource group. Okay, that concludes the CMS series of videos. I hope you enjoyed them. And if you want to go and look at more information about the company I work for, we you can just go to www.colab com. You can follow me on Twitter at Vic Marley, and that's also going to work for Facebook. And you can even email me at Vic at Colab com, and I'll be very happy to answer any questions or give you any guidance on the CCI collaboration exam. Thank you for watching.